Experts warn some white collar jobs are vanishing by the thousands and they may never come back. Inflation and rising interest rates are forcing companies to cut their back office workforce. Mike Rowe, CEO of the Micro Works Foundation and all around great guy, is here with this. Morning um, you. This is not a surprise yeah. to you, but just to give people a little context, the most new, the, the jobs that will be in the most demand in the next 10 years, we can put them up on the screen here home health, personal care, restaurant cooks, software developers fast food and operations managers. Then if you look at labor department projections, if you look at the top 10, several of these these jobs, like for example, driver mm -hmm. and engineers, they're the kind of people that you have been trying to help reach and also train through your foundation. This thing's got a like a long tail, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, 40 years ago, from my point of view, it started when we took shop class out of high school. And when we did that, we really just unleashed a storm of unintended consequences. Around the same time, we started telling kids that the best path for the most people was a four-year degree. Not just a good path, but a path that if you didn't take, you're gonna wind up with some sort of vocational consolation prize. That steady drumbeat after 40 years, that's what we're seeing right now. We've got over 11 million open positions, most of which don't require a four-year degree. We got $1.7 trillion in student debt on the books. We're lending money to kids who will never be able to pay it back to train them for a lot of jobs that no longer exist. And we still just have our thumb on the scale. We're still saying these jobs are good, these jobs are bad. I've been hearing from for years that robots are going to wreck blue collar work. Turns out AI is coming for your white collar job. Yeah. It's all backwards. Yeah. And it's a heck of a thing to unpack. So, so interesting. I, I just look at home health care and personal care. I think about we're living longer, right? right. Think about registered nurses. I, th these are areas that are only going to grow it's, it's in huge. greater demand for. Well, we know. were just saying in the break, you know, Rwanda has this very, very young population with a whole different set of problems. Our population is getting older and older and older. It, I don't think you need to be an economist or a rocket scientist to see that no. there's going to be incredible opportunity in that area, but that's not a four-year degree world. It's a yeah. six-figure job that just requires a different way of thinking. Let's talk about Elon Musk. Go yeah, ahead, Yeah, I'll play a little bit for you because he got asked about working from home. He thinks working from home is morally wrong. <laughs> uh, and he said this, listen to him here. The, the laptop class is living in La La Land, okay? The, as I said, the, you, you, you can't, but look at the cars. Are people working from, from home here? Of course not. How is that? That is, it's not just a productivity thing. I think it's morally, morally wrong. And you can't build cars from home. No, you can't. You know, it's, uh, I just read this book. You would love it. It's called The Comfort Crisis. Oh, I bought it because you told me to. Oh, uh, well, oh yeah, yeah. Boom, boom. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> Circle gets a square. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know about morally right or wrong, and I don't know that it's always wise to paint with too broad a brush, because there really is a la-la land. You know, I mean, he's referring to it as a fictitious place. But... It's, it's a real place, and there are plenty of people, I think, who can be productive working from home. But by and large, if you're doing the thing you're doing because it makes you comfortable, you're probably taking some kind of shortcut. And shortcuts lead to long delays. We know that. It was my earlier point. These things take a long time to matriculate. There's going to be a lot of unintended consequences for not going into the office, from socialization just to basic collaboration. You lose so much when you're home alone staring at your screen, no matter how effective you are. 58% yeah. of companies allow their employees to work a portion of the week from home. The number of companies that require employees to be in the office has gone down to 42% from 49% three months ago. I think that whole phrase, the laptop class, <laughs> right. I mean, you get the image, right? You're sitting in a Starbucks or a local coffee shop, and that's yeah. where you spend seven to eight hours of your day. The screen, the screen is a heck of a thing. Nick Eberstadt says that he, he writes a lot about the 7.2 million men who are currently not in the workforce, not just why they're not in the workforce, but what are they doing? And he estimates that over 2,000 hours per year, per individual, is spent on the screen. This screen, a Netflix screen, your phone, whatever it is, there's a lot of scrolling going on. But look, again, the laptop class sounds great. It's an easy target. I know some people in that class who are actually thriving. So we gotta be careful with the broad proclamations. But by and large, I think when you look at the percentages that you just quoted, uh -huh. to me, it's like an electrocardiogram. 
Right now, it's, it's here. Then it's going to be here. Then it's going to be here. And we're right in the middle of it. And it all just seems crazy and random, like we're forest gumping our way through some sort of economic indicator. Wow. Years from now, we're going to look back and go, oh, well, that was obvious, that, that wasn't was it? it? Right? Well, you're going to be on the big money sh uh, show today, uh, talking with our friends Taylor and Brian and Jackie. We're having so. a town hall. Oh, is that right? You're going to talk. Oh, it's a town hall. We're going to solve the problems yeah, of the world. Take on the laptop class. You bet. It's great to see you. Yeah, you really good to see you. Out, Michael, thanks. Okay? Always welcome, and thanks for coming back even after but, the hearing. Talk to you again, okay? Sure. You bet. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.